Welcome to the Faith Lift Radio Podcast, where doubt is destroyed and your faith is lifted. Here's today's message from Dr. Glenn. Father, thank you as we go to your word that we are blessed, your people are blessed. Think through my mind and speak through my lips in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to our message today. We've been talking to you about faith for our God-given destiny. Now, remember, the secular and the religious definition of destiny, they define it, and it is wrong. It's not right. <clears throat> destiny is what the hand of fate, F-A-T-E, has given to you, and there's nothing you can do about it. That is a religious definition and a secular definition. All right? Whereas, scripturally, that does not stand up with the Scripture. With the Scripture and in the Scripture, destiny is what the hand of faith, F-A-I-T-H, procures and secures. Destiny, according to the Scripture, is what the hand of faith procures and secures. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12, Jesus is talking. He says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Say that with me, please. The violent take it by force. Destiny is to be taken by force. Repeat after me. Destiny is to be what? Taken to be seized <coughs> by force. Life does not give you what you deserve, but life gives you what you fight for. Let me say it again. Destiny is to be taken by force. Life does not give you what you deserve, but what you fight for. Ladies and gentlemen, destiny, glory to God, is unfolded, destiny unfolded, is, thank you Lord Jesus, destiny unfolded, is the unfolding of what God has planned for you from before the creation of the world and you discovered that plan. Let's say it again. Destiny unfolded is the unfolding of what God had already planned for you from before the creation of the world, and you discovered that plan. I got to say it again, because some of it went above your head. Ladies and gentlemen, destiny unfolded is basically the unfolding of what God had already planned for you from before the creation of the world and you discovered that plan. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 tells us, For I know the thoughts, for I know the plans that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. So destiny unfolded is you discovering the expected end that God has for you. Jeremiah 1 and verse 4, the word of the Lord came unto me, Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee, glory to God, a prophet unto the nations. Before you were formed, before you came out of the womb, there was already a plan for you, Jeremiah. There was a preordained plan. Are you listening? A what now? A preordained plan path, a preordained plan, 
a preordained path, a preordained place, and a preordained portion. That is what destiny in God is. It is a preordained plan, a preordained path, a preordained what place and a preordained portion or a preordained prosperity and it is your duty to discover it job chapter 28 and verse 7 there is a path we're going to read quite a few scriptures here to verse 23 there is a path which no fowl knoweth and which the vulture's eye has not seen. Well, you remember when Jesus was talking about the parable of the sower, so of the word. He likened the fowl to the devil. So we can say this way, there's a path, there's a plan, there's a place which the devil doesn't know. And which the vulture's eyes has not seen. Now what are the vulture's eyes? That's demons. <coughs> the lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. He putteth forth his hand upon the rock, he overturneth the mountains by the roots. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks, and his eyes seeth every precious thing. He bindeth the floods from overflowing, and the, the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But where shall wisdom be found? That plan is the wisdom of God. And where is a place of understanding? All right. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth said, it is not in me. And the sea saith, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh this wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid in the eyes of all living. It is hid in the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air, from the demons, of the devils. Destruction and death says, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears, but God understands the way thereof and he knows the place thereof. There's a plan, there's a path, there's a place. Sit up with me, please. There's a plan, there's a path, there's a place. Say it again. Say, my destiny. God has a plan for my life. He has a path for my life. He has a place for my life. And he has a portion for my life. So you need to understand that God has a plan for our lives, for your life. Let me read to you about three men. <coughs> <coughs> Well, two men, really. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7, says, By faith, Noah, Noah was discovered the plan of God, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So notice that Noah discovered God's plan for the earth and his personal, God's personal plan for his life. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place with which he should after receive an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing where he went. All right? Not knowing exactly the place where he was going, what was going to be there, what waited for him. But he knew where he was going. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and 
the heirs with him of the same promise, for he looked for a city who has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. So notice that God had a plan for Abraham, just like God had a plan for Moses, just like God had a plan for Noah. And they had to discover that plan. There is a plan, there is a path, there is a place, there is a portion. Say that with me, please. I understand. So come on, lift up your hands and say with me. I understand. There is a plan. There is a path. There is a place. There is a portion. And I've got to make it my priority to find that plan, to find that place, to find that path, to find that portion. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Proverbs 25 and verse 2. Proverbs 25 and verse 2. Look what the Bible says here. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. Look at the word thing. Write the word word. Write the word plan. It is to the glory of God to conceal a plan, a word. But the honor of kings is to search out the matter, to search out that plan. Now the New Living Translation of this verse goes like this. It is God's privilege to conceal things and the king's privilege, that's you, to discover them. It's got to be your priority and your pursuit to discover God's plan, God's path, God's place, God's portion. Say that with me, please. It is my priority, my pursuit to discover God's plan, God's path, God's place, God's portion. Now, the Passion Translation goes like this. God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. But the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God has said. So, are you and have you and will you thoroughly search out the plan that God has for you? One Bible goes like this. <clears throat> it is the glory of God to conceal a plan, but the honor of kings is to investigate, search, and seek out the plan. Repeat after me. It is the glory of God to conceal a plan, but the honor of kings, your honor, is to investigate, to search, to seek out, the plan of God. So, ladies and gentlemen, fulfilling destiny will require, first of all, <coughs> a diligent search. <coughs> the fulfillment of your destiny will require, first of all, a diligent search. Are you searching? So let me read it again. It is the glory of God to conceal a plan, but the honor of kings is to investigate, to search out, and to seek out that plan. Psalm 77 and verse 6. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. My spirit made diligent search. Did you, did you read that? My what now? My spirit made diligent search. How does my spirit make diligent search? Now, Romans 8 and 26, Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts 
knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to <coughs> the will of God. So I want, you, I want to give you maybe three or four keys today. All right, three or four keys if time is willing. If time is on our side, okay, glory to God. How do we have faith for our God-given destiny? How do we find that God's plan, God's path, God's place, and God's portion? Number one, our spirit makes diligent search by praying in the spirit. Our spirit makes diligent search by praying in the Spirit. One of the great reasons why we pray in the Spirit is to find the specificity of the plan of God for our life. Let me say it again. One of the great reasons why we pray in the Spirit is to find the specifics of the plan of God for our lives. God's plan for our lives will come in two forms. Number one, a generic plan, and you discover that from knowing the scriptures. That's the generic. But the specific plan for your life, you discover it from knowing the voice of the Holy Spirit. The generic plan, you know the voice of the Word. And this is why you've got to go to a word church that will teach you the word, teach you your inheritance, teach you the will of God for your life, the plan of God for your life. But the specific of it, you will know it when you know the voice of the Holy Spirit. So you've got to know the voice of the word and you've got to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. So, <clears throat> so our spirit man makes diligent search when we are praying in the Spirit. It is by praying in the Spirit that I began to discover God's specific plan for my life. Of course, I was praying in the Spirit in church. I was praying in the Spirit in all-night prayer meeting. And I was praying in the Spirit by myself. Are you listening? So, we discover it is to your honor to investigate, to discover, to search out that plan. And you do so by spending time praying in the Spirit. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Can you say thank you, Jesus? So, take some time <clears throat> to spend some time to pray in the Spirit. Pray and listen. Pray and listen. Say that with me, please. Pray and listen. I remember one time I was with Jerry Savelle. He was with me. We were doing a convention in Mauritius. I asked him about his prayer life. He said, I do my praying by listening. I pray in the Spirit and I listen. I pray in the Spirit and I listen. I pray in the Spirit and I listen. Well, when, what happens when you listen? You discover God's plan. You discover God's will. You discover God's ways. You discover the specifics of what God has for you. Can you say amen? All right, so <clears throat> I want you to spend some time praying in the Spirit. Number two. Faith works on obedience to the specific, concrete, God-ordained plan. Let's say it again. Faith works or operates on obedience to the specific, concrete, God-ordained plan. Remember that plan? has been before the foundation of the world. It's a custom design, fully loaded, amen, planned just for you. Now, Noah had a specific instruction. Build the ark with its specifications given for the ark. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to read verse 11, from verse 11, all right, verse 11 onwards to verse 17, and then we're going to read verse 22. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, 
for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh is come near before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now look at the instructions. Now make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and thou shalt pitch in, pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. The door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Look, can you see the specific instructions here? And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, which is, wherein is the breath of life, from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. All right, did you notice that? Thus Noah, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Look at verse 22, please. Verse 22. Thus did Noah according to all <coughs> thank you Lord Jesus can you say thank you Lord Jesus glory be to God thank you Lord Jesus now ladies and gentlemen notice something here thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him so did he Genesis chapter 7 and verse 5 Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. This is why I'm telling you, it's very important for you to understand this, that faith works or operates on obedience to the specific, concrete, God-ordained plan and God-ordained instructions. Moses also had specifications to build the tabernacle. They did not just get the plan and then make, made up the plan according to their own head. No, 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 no. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 9. According to all that I show you, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instrument thereof, even so shall you make it. Exodus 25 verse 40. And look that thou make them after the pattern after the what their pattern, which was showed to you in the mount. He had to obey instruction. Obedience is important, ladies and gentlemen. Abraham also had specifics. Anytime you discover somebody who is in destiny and their destiny is being unfolded is because they're following specific instructions. All right? Hebrews 11 verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed, he obeyed, he what? Obeyed. He went out not knowing where he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise in a, as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with them of the same promise. For he looked for a city who has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Now, let's come down to 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22. So you have to understand, you've got to search it out by praying in the Spirit, waiting upon the Lord. Amen. Waiting upon the Lord. One of the ways we wait upon the Lord is by praying in the Spirit. I'm not talking about you going out in, a tongues, of, in tongues of fury and then you just fizzle out. No, I'm talking about praying through, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit until you hear from God. And once you've heard from God, you've searched out the plan, then search out the specific instruction, and then obey the instructions. First Samuel 15, 22, you're going to see a man <coughs> who was in his destiny and lost his destiny. Why? He did not obey instructions. First Samuel 15, 22, and Samuel said, 
to Saul, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. Say that with me, please. To obey is better than sacrifice. Saul missed his destiny because he was not obedient. He was disobedient. In fact, he was partially obedient. And I want you to please write this down. Partial obedience is total disobedience. Partial obedience is total disobedience. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, the Bible says. Are you following me? So, let me say it again. Number two, faith works, operates on obedience to the specific, concrete, God-ordained plan in order for destiny to yield to you. Number three. I want you to write this down, please. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to give you just three today. All right. Thank you, Lord. Destiny is secured. God-given destiny is secured on the platform of violently taking what is yours by faith, by prayer, and by prophecy. God-given destiny is secured on the platform of violently taking what is yours by faith, by prayer, and by prophecy. Like I said, you'll discover God's plan through a word. That is a prophetic word. It can come to you in your time of waiting upon the Lord. It can come to you when somebody prophesies upon you and gives you a word. You've just when somebody prophesies upon you, it is not Sue's saying. It is God giving you a an opening vista, amen, as to what belongs to you. This is why Paul said to Timothy, This charge I commit unto thee, verse 18, Son Timothy, according to the prophecies, not just one, he had many, which went before on you, that you by them might war a good warfare. All right? Holding faith, warfare, warfare, warring with the prophecies, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made a shipwreck. Okay, let me read that to you from different translation. The New Living Translation goes like this. Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you. Based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you fight well. In the Lord's battles. So, a prophecy is a weapon. Say that with me, please. A prophecy is a weapon of warfare. Say it again, please. A prophecy is a what? A weapon. Say that with me, please. A prophecy is a what? A weapon of warfare. Hallelujah. The New International Version of this verse goes like this. Timothy, my son... I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. So, prophecies are weapons of warfare, and you do so by recalling it. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope, lamentations. Right? Hebrews says, but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were enlightened, you endured a great fight of affliction. Can you say amen? I love the Berean Stent Bible of this verse. Timothy, my child, I entrust you with this command in keeping with the previous prophecies about you so that by them you may fight the good fight. Well, how do you fight the good fight of faith? With your prophecies. The Holman Christian Standard Bible Timothy, my son, I am giving you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you, so that by them you may strongly engage in battle. <coughs> you have to engage prophecies in battles. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to write this down. The prophetic, your prophetic destiny, which has been a secret from the foundation of the world, if they're going to be unfolded, it will be unfolded and unleashed on the wings of faithful praying. Your prophetic destiny will be unleashed, amen, on the wings of faithful praying, engaging prophetic praying. Prophetic praying is praying the prophecies through to fulfillment. God-given destiny is unleashed by engaging aggressive praying the prophecies spoken over your life. Remember two things. Two beings are stirred, motivated by your prophecies. Jeremiah prophesied and Daniel read the prophecies of Jeremiah in Daniel chapter 9. And as he was reading it, that prophecy, the prince of Persia decided to be a blockage or to abort, to frustrate and to deny that prophetic word from coming to pass. So two beings are stirred when a prophecy is released. A demon or an angel. But because Daniel was faithful and kept praying, and he had perseverance in prayer, he was praying the prophecies of Daniel. Gabriel was sum summoned, and then the prince of Persia was hindering Gabriel, but Daniel did not give up. He kept praying. Then Michael was also summoned. Are you listening? So God-given destiny or prophetic destiny is unleashed by engaging aggressive praying of the prophecies spoken over your life. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given you by prophecy. So a prophecy is God depositing a gift into your spirit, into your life. So what are we supposed to do? Verse 15. Meditate upon these things, give yourself wholly to them, that thy profiting, that thy profiting, say with me, prophecy, meditate, profit, prophecy, praying, profit, prophecy, praying it through, progress, prophecy, praying it through, progress. The reason why we're not seeing progress in our life is because we've got this prophecy and it's just roaming around doing nothing. <coughs> You've got to engage these prophecies like Daniel and engage them by prayer, glory to God, so that it becomes a reality in your life. So that prophecy, which was given to you either from the Word, or God spoke to you in a dream, or God spoke to you personally, while you were waiting upon Him, is the revelation of what God has already decreed, declared, done in heaven. That's already declared, done in heaven. But it's up to you now to download it. So, prophecy is heavenly vision awaiting earthly execution. Now, Paul says, meditate, pray. Okay, so I want you to write this down today. How will you do this? How will you do it? Number three, remember now, destiny is secured on the platform of violently taking what is yours on the wings, all right, by faith, by prayer, and by prophecy. So, <clears throat> Paul just revealed to you the power and the purpose of the prophetic. First, he said to Timothy, with these prophecies you fight and you do warfare. Second, he said, don't forget the gift that was given to you or passed on through prophecy. Third, he said that the prophecy was an act of grace. Fourth, he said to Timothy that he should give himself entirely to these prophecies so that his progress could be seen by all. 
everyone can see that you have benefited from these prophecies. So, prophecies are for your progress to appear to all. You don't want a case of failed prophecy, which Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And remember what I told you before, a failed prophecy are those who were never prophesied, re-prophesied, and prayed through for manifestation by the receiver. A failed prophecy is an unfulfilled prophecy that was never detonated, that was never detonated by the spiritual forces of faith, of faith, fasting, and prayer. Are you listening? So you've got to make sure that you engage these forces. So three things I've given you today. Number one, you've got to search it out. Search out God's plan, God's path, God's place, God's portion. How do you search it out? Praying in the Spirit. Number two, once you've searched it out, that plan, find out the specifications of what God has for you and then obey them. And then obey them. Number three, you have to engage prayer, faith, and fasting violent praying and prophesy or reprophesy these prophecies so that they come to pass. You will need angelic interventions because two beings react will react when there is a, a prophecy over your life, demons and angels. Are you listening? Remember, life doesn't give you what you deserve, but life gives you what you fight for. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Faith Lift Radio podcast. For more information about Dr. Glenn and how to offer your financial support, log on to glennarecchion.org. 